Hello everyone and thank you for coming back to my YouTube channel. That channel is Deb Chanel's 48 Squirrel. Hopefully you have all gotten home, gotten settled, or just eating and just sitting and chilling, okay? And y'all just said, oh, let me just tune in and see what Deb Chanel 48 Squirrel is talking about today. Well, honey, baby. <laughs> I tell you, my housewives of Atlantis, co-stars, they keep me busy. They stay in the news, and then I try to stay on the tube trying to keep up with their behinds. But anyway, I was sitting at home minding my own business. Oh, I forgot to uh, invite y'all into the house. Come on in the house, family. Come on in the house. Let's sit down. Get your favorite beverage going. Whatever you eating on, continue to eat. And let me express this story that I'm getting ready to break out on my channel about Mr. Todd Tucker and Miss Candy Burris Tucker, okay? I don't know what's going on up in that household, but it seems like it's a, a major discord going on. We're just going to have to just shut him out right about now, okay? Pardon me for those minor interruptions. But anyway, yeah, I was just minding my own business yesterday. Um, uh, evening and i just ran across you know my video feed just searching for stories and just searching for it just entertainment see now he want to come back in uh, he gonna stay out there for a few minutes but anyway um and i ran across candy and and todd on their social media platform i think it was called uh i want to say it's on her speak on it version of a youtube platform and maybe she has another one just dedicated to just her and todd but honey they was over there Breaking down their own tea, spilling their own tea, child. Anyway, and so they were going on talking about they done bought a little baby Blaze home, and um, Todd is just not really feeling like being at home. <laughs> He feeling like he's being isolated over at the house. And one thing I did notice that kind of, like, it didn't make me feel good about their relationship. Because I've always said, and I always still feel the same, I really feel he's an opportunist. He's a nice, charming opportunist, but I really feel like he should be having his own assets. He should be doing his own thing. If Candy want to front him money for different projects, different um, lucrative or hopefully lucrative business dealings, then, you know, so be it. She should help him because that's her husband. But for him to be like, I ain't going to say her lap dog, but just be all the way around her all the time, 24 self. I know that kind of can, that kind of can seem like he's in a very diminished role or he's, um, her lap dog, for lack of a better word, to express myself on what I'm feeling. Or, or maybe a little degrading for Todd, because he's always with her, always, you know, being her hype person, her bodyguard. You know, just a, a lot of things that really shouldn't have anything to do with him, but, you know, it just is what it is. Candy bought and paid for him. She liked him there, she wanted him there, and she expect for him to be there. But they was on their little platform. I guess it's called Todd and Candy. So I'm guessing the Todd and Candy show uh, that they done made up. Where it's their YouTube channel where they just talk about life, life issues. Things that are affecting maybe society as well as themselves. Personally, I wouldn't be on a platform like that. Sharing my intimate, intimate most sacred details that, you know, I'm letting the world know. And I'm like, hmm. What is going on with the Real Housewives of Atlanta? Is it the baby land as well as divorce land or troubled marriage land we're experiencing in season 12? Because I'm like, well, damn, you know, every time you turn around, somebody got issues other than Kenya Moore. We know Portia has expressed throughout several episodes. Now, I guess that's going to be her whole storyline for season 12. Ooh, if they get a 13, please, Portia. I don't want to hear anything else about Dennis and this, that, and the third. I, I, I'm, I'm over it, okay? I'm fed up. My cup is full, okay, babe? No, I'm tired of uh, Kenya and this Mark situation. I mean, yeah, Mark situation going on. I'm like, I'm ready to see the ending of the demise of this fake marriage. I, I'm ready for him to come on 
uh, in the room and, and talk and be telling Kenya on one episode I showed. I don't know if it's just a little clip. Don't even know if it's going to be in the finished product that they show us for season 12. But he getting on that to my honey. You could take everything. I'll be going to shit bad. You know, bam. I just don't want you. I don't want the situation no more. I want to be free. He didn't say all that. But he did say if she take it all, he'll build it back up. He ain't scared. He ain't afraid of no real work. Okay, that's what he was giving me, that kind of tease. But anyway, just to get back to Candy's situation, I'm like, what is she doing, Lord? Is she trying to tell us? Is this, is this a cry for help? She wants her loyal uh, viewers to come in and support her, too. I mean, what's going on? I mean, damn. You wanted this baby. I know you didn't want to destroy your eggs and... You placed two in your surrogate, one took, one didn't, and now the baby's here. Now you're crying and whining about Todd is not there for you. He left the the next day after the baby had came home from the hospital. He's out in that party in the club. You just whine and whine and whine. I'm like, damn, Candy, you wanted this, okay? And most men, unless they're a special, special man that's very in tune into the fem, fem, <coughs> feminine ways of a woman, you know, they're very key on, you know, the situations. Uh, and that's not taught. But you said you had this problem with him prior to this baby with baby Ace. So what did you think was going to be different from bring, bringing baby Blaze into the situation. Ty still was going to do what he wanted to do when he wanted to do it. And he didn't care. Because he's saying your family is always around you. Your friends are always around you. And that's what he said. Came out of his mouth. I can't make this stuff up. And I'm like, damn, Ty, you ain't got no friends that, you know, you could go see in, in, in other states or whatnot. New York or whatnot. You just feel like you're just surrounded and you're embedded. And you just overwhelmed with all Candace's friends and her family members. Because technically, when y'all got married, and Lord knows y'all been five plus years in, they supposed to be your family now. But I saw, heard on your little video platform, <laughs> excuse me, YouTube platform, that you said out your own mouth, your family's always here. Your friends are always here, but I guess your friends are my friends. <laughs> I said, what, the party animals, the ones that like to get out and party and spend that money and make it rain, um, you know, all at the strip clubs and all that. I mean, that's what you're talking about, Tyler. Those kind of friends you hanging out with that are candy friends. Okay. Mm-hmm. I see you. In my nene voice, I said what I said. And that's what you pretty much told Candy. I said I was going to the strip club. I said I was coming home, but I saw Apollo. So I said I was going to hang out with him a little longer. And then you got the headache because Todd had promised you that he was going to be coming back after a game. So I'm like, girl. <laughs> It's a life with Todd being married, and then it's a life with Todd being a parent, and then it's a life of Todd just being in Todd's world. <laughs> okay, again, so I'm like, baby, what's going on? You trying to figure out where you fit in plus the two children? And then, you know, you were saying that he was feeling some kind of way about baby Blaze. Like, he wasn't even trying to bond with her and this, that, and third. And he was like, well... It's different. And I'm like, okay, it was different because you couldn't hold on to Candace's belly and watch it grow and kick and, and move around. You know, was the experience different from when she was um, carrying baby Ace? Of course it was. She was in her belly. She was there with you all the time. You think she was going to have you rub on Shadonna's belly and all that? That wouldn't have been right. You know that would have been right, dog. I don't even think she was your, your, your type anyway. Even if you did want to get a little rubby rub. But I know you felt it was kind of uncomfortable. It wasn't, you know, this, it, it wasn't what you was used to uh, being a part of. So I get that. I understand. Better man than me. She a better than woman than me. Because I, I don't know. I don't know if I wanted somebody to carry a child for me. But that's just me. Plenty of people out there doing it. And they're fine. But can't seem like she wanted to just hold on to Shadonna. I think that Shadeen, I hope that's her name. I hope I'm not tearing the child's name up. But apologize if you see this video and I'm just slaughtering your name. I'm sorry. But anyway, yeah, Candy wanted to make a friendship out of it. I'm like, Candy, um, 
You kind of crossing borders or barriers, babe. You're not supposed to associate with the uh, person who cared the baby because then they may start feeling some kind of way, some maternal instincts ways towards that baby. And you making it very possible for her to do that by you having this friendship with her off screen because it seems like you've overcompensated her, not monetar monetary-wise, but... I guess emotional wise, you, you've gotten a little bit too close, and I understand it because I wouldn't, I wouldn't feel bad if I was in your situation and that's the child grew up and they probably want to know who was the surrogate and maybe the child felt some little bond or some attachment, uh, but just as long as the barriers were set that you know I am your mom, it was my age, she was just like the oven baking. Uh, you for me and Todd. Todd is your dad. That was his sperm. You know, just trying to explain to her that way because I don't think you should keep it a secret. But anyway, biological, biologically, everything fits as you and Todd being the, you know, true parents of Baby mm -hmm. Blaze. However, you know, you still needed that oven to bake that um baby, right? So I don't know. I, I'm getting off in a tangent. Don't really want to go too far in that. But I was just like. Candy, you coming on your mm -hmm. social media platform trying to decipher whether you were right about the argument or Todd was right about the argument. Was he right for leaving you uh, after a day that Baby Blaze was brought home from the hospital? And I'm sure your anxiety level was way off the Richter, uh, Richter scale. And I'm sure his was too because... You know, he's like trying to process everything because it wasn't like a normal birth that, you know, you go through and all this and third. But, you know, a man going to be a man. They have to get their issues straightened out with other men. Or I don't know, maybe he's feeling overwhelmed because it seemed like he just kept harping on the deal that, you know, your friends are always around you. Your family is always around you. Where's that coming from, Candy girl? You like I said, you five plus years in this marriage. Why that man ain't feeling like that's his family by now? What's going on, girl? Is Todd father still living? His dad still living? Do Todd got any cousins he hang around? What, where's his family, Kayla? Cause y'all, we barely see Kayla, and I can't you know speak too much on that because Kayla has a biological mom in the picture and she may not want that for her daughter to be in the line like you know and me messing around they she get a paparazzi attached to her and then she be showing her mama business her mom person i don't want all that 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 uh tv time the entertainment time uh -uh. so and that's something candy and um todd is used to and now baby riley's getting used to it kayla has some you know what do you call it um experience with being on camera and being filming and maybe she don't too much care for it either but or maybe todd is in, in his little ways where he don't even want his baby girl to be taping you know because she might make too much money that he have to break her off or something i don't know how these contracts are when you're on uh, reality tv's uh programs and you come in as a guest or the family or friend or the family or you know like a child of the family do they get paid y'all i don't know y'all let me know but anyway it's just a whole deal about candace coming on a national wide platform asking us her viewers some fanatics some you know followers whatever uh you may deem yourself as when you're uh getting close to somebody you think you know on television or you know radio or whatnot but she seemed like she was asking us for real what we were really thinking about because at first after she's taking it like you know kiki ha ha look at candy and todd up here trying to make more money more money and then i'm like kind of looking at it and listening a little deeper clearer and it seemed like they got some issues going on like damn you can divorce next you gonna be up in somebody's attorney office I mean, I know you got a prenup and all, but girl, you don't have these babies now. Now you ready to call it a day? You trying to call it a day on Todd Candy? Are you trying to manhandle him, girl? Are you out there manhandling that man? Thinking he won't leave your butt? Have you heard? Enough is enough is enough. I can't go on. I can't go on now, baby. 
That is Donna Summers. Yes, girl, hand you back in the, what is it, the 70s, the disco days. Girl, you better stop your mess. You better keep this mess off this um, um video platform, YouTube platform. Hell, it's enough to be on Bravo uh shows and they showing him acting up behind scenes like he don't want to really be filmed and he don't want you saying this and he don't want you saying that and girl can you got something to tell her day but anyway i just wanted to dwell on that to kind of get uh you ready for this story that i'm breaking uh and it has a relationship towards what was aired yesterday that candy put out for everybody to uh, come at her in a negative way or a positive way or, you know, indifferent way. Whether you mean you didn't care which one or the, which way or the other. It was just entertainment for you. But I'm like, Candy, this is a good way for you to become a single woman. You know, because Todd can only take so much. And he definitely not going to be trying to take a lot of negativity. And he's already saying everybody's around you. They surrounding you. They supporting you. And he got to go sit in the room and be by himself, which he say he likes it. He's okay with it. But, no, that sounds like a cry for help. He, ain't, he, ain't, he, don't, he don't like that stuff, can He don't like that stuff. So what can y'all do to pretty much get back on the right foot? Because that's what I'm seeing, a major divide. And it's just like. Why you call it those birthing pains just before a true earthquake starts. It starts with some little trembles here until that big blow up bit one coming off. Cause he, you know, he's everybody can see. Even a blind man can see. He don't like how you just really overindulge Riley's um wants, needs, desires, you know what I'm saying? Cause buying her a Porsche at what, fifteen and a half, sixteen. That's a bit much. She would look the good in a cord. You know what I'm saying? A souped up a cord or whatever. But, you know, it's, it's your money. Do what you can do. If you want to buy her a Cadillac, I want to say it next. <laughs> I'd be like, well, roll on, roll on, roll on, Riley, girl. But, yeah, I'm still needing you to teach her the basics, Ken. I still want you to be sitting up there showing that woman how to clean a toilet by herself, how to clean the bathrooms, uh how to sweep or vacuum how to uh what do you call that uh dust you know do things you need to maybe chaperone a, a shadow a maid just to see how things really are getting down how you really do do things because just because you solidified yourself in the entertainment field and you don't rub elbows and hugs have hugs with celebrities on your status if not higher doesn't mean Riley's going to be in that type of, you know, arena. And is she going to be able to keep up with your status? You know what I'm saying? We want so much for our kids and we put them out there and we expose them to so many wonderful things. But in the cup, uh, well, in the cut of the deeper things, they might even come out to be close to what we thought they would be. So, I mean, I'm, I'm in a sense, I'm like, don't set her up for failure. I always indulge her in her interests. But don't put so much of a burden of her to be so successful or succeed your success that she feels like, you know, later on when she hits her, what, 20, 21, 24, 26 mark, and she hadn't accomplished a third of what you've accomplished, Candy, because that could be very detrimental on somebody's ego and psyche. So I'm just saying, pump the gas now. You know, pump, yeah, pump the brakes, I meant to say. Watch her, guide her. And definitely inspire her, but really listen to her. Because sometimes people, you know, us as human beings, we can say we want to do this. We get the degree or, or we don't practice in it for, you know, say five plus years, 10 plus years. We get tired. We get bored. We want to do something else. So I'm just saying it's wonderful what you're doing, but teach baby girl the basis just in case she don't land on her feet as you thought she would. Uh, but she's still happy and she's still doing something, even it may not be totally what she had said she wanted to do and you have groomed her to be. You know, just, you know, look out for that is what I'm saying. But getting back to you, let's get on into this article because I definitely have tarried a little bit too long. <laughs> so we're going to go into an article that bckonline.com had brought out on the story that Candy and Todd had partaked of last night. They took their story and ran with it and made up um, their spin on what they 
felt they got out of Candy and Todd's little excerpt or excerpt that they put out on social media. They, I think her name is Sari. Sari. She's um, a commentary person over there or a journalist or correspondent. She wrote the article uh, on this piece she did on Todd and um, Candy. And she titled it, Candy Burris says Todd Tucker isn't chipping in with new baby. I feel like he's being selfish. Now, she Candy did put that out there. or Not necessarily selfish, but... He wants to do what he wants to do, and he's not really looking at the bigger picture, meaning she needs help with the babies. Because, you know, you still got baby Ace over there. He's trying to figure out what he needs to do to help out his little sister. But, you know, he his eyes are bigger than what he feel he can do. <laughs> or we know he can do and cannot do. But his heart is in the right place, bless his heart. But, I mean, when she asked the question about was Todd, you know, uh, unfair in what he had did i would say yeah to a certain degree because if he knew y'all were getting to do this uh or y'all were going to be coming home then i would have really felt that yeah he should have gave his all even if it was like the the day hours of the day and you took over the night hours because he wanted to go out but you know, women are more so, and I ain't going to say g by generalizing we all because we're not. Uh, I ain't going to be no cookie cutter type situation scenario going on over here. But uh, most women are a little bit more nurturing uh, than men. Um, they want to make sure the baby's breathing. They want to make sure the baby's not choking. You know, just little things that go through our minds when we are watching them, you know, because we're, like, responsible for this little life. And, you know, you got so much thing, go, so much, um, what do you call it, um, medical conditions that can go on. Especially, like, with that uh, unknown sea situation where you can die, the baby can die in a crib through the suffocation. Or did you stop breathing? And, you know, that being her last egg, meaning biologically she can carry another child or have an egg to produce another child that's paramount for her so she don't want anything to happen to this baby girl and then i think she wanted another girl anyway so say that say this todd you should have been a little bit more aware of it but we ain't gonna put you out to pasture we just want you to do better because she's already telling you you know do right by ace when he was in his little formative years you know just trying to hold his head up and, and drink his bottle without anybody assistance and stuff of that nature but we know you love baby ace that's your man that's your boy and we know you're gonna groom him to how you feel he should be groomed okay but when it comes to baby ace i can see your anxiety i can see your apprehension uh because it wasn't a uh pregnancy a normal pregnancy that you were used to being a part of so i get it got it good but we need you to step up your game okay we get into the article it says candy birds and todd tucker are having a few bumps in the road as they adjust to life with a newborn baby the real housewives of atlanta star and her husband recently took to youtube to give fans an update on their bay meaning baby blaze tucker and how their home is adjusting to meet the needs of the newest member of the family okay and can already pretty much said she up on the hour of every hour because that baby girl like to eat so i'm like mm, candy don't that sound familiar because before you got into this weight loss, pro weight loss program where you've been drinking most of your meals uh, and, you know, I guess eating one solid meal, uh, you used to eat, girl. You used to eat. Everything was an eating session for you. Not saying that you blew up and looked like an elephant or, or a whale, but, you know, you were conscious of every time, you know, you went to a gathering or a function, you were ready to eat. So... Hmm, you gonna talk about why your baby girl is, is always hungry all the time? Come on, girl. Come on, girl. Wink, wink. I know. Girl, I know you. But anyway, going on back to the article, it says, it's been interesting doing new baby life again. Candy told social media fans, Todd told viewers she thought I was having a problem connecting with the baby. That's her opinion. And Todd, from what you were saying, I get that opinion, too. I don't know if it's just because Candy didn't carry the baby and you didn't have your time where you would cuddle up with her and feel the baby's movement and watch, you know, Candy go through the pregnancy and, you know, the glow she would experience and, the, you know, the touching that you would do 
or when y'all were getting it down pregnant, you know, I, I guess maybe that was a little bit better for you too. I don't know. So you missed all that because you knew what it was when she was carrying baby Ace and then you didn't get a chance to kind of bond with the baby because, you know, the baby was cooking in some other female. And you, we, we weren't going to have you over there rubbing and, and getting involved and, and, and you know, touchy-feely with the surrogate. No, we couldn't have all that. So I could see your point and that was good that you validated that Candy had a, or she felt that was the issue, even though you said it wasn't, okay? Then going in, back to the article, said Candy did not let Todd comment go unaddressed. The Real Housewives of Atlanta instead brought to light the issues that she and her husband has experienced since their daughter's birth, okay? It says, you are not chipping in, honey. That's what Candy chimed in and told her hubby. You're not chipping in, and we're going to have some problems still. You did the same shit with Ace, okay? And we ain't going to go through this. Because I call my mama. She'll start regulating over here. You know Mama Joy will. <laughs> you know she. Mm, you trying to bring the baby to her? When she already done helped y'all with baby Ace, she was like, mm, mm This ain't no baby factory of babysitting situation over here y'all may have taken care of me by giving me cars houses and whatnot but in jury and maybe a stipend to go on along with my social security but guess what mm -mm. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. that's y'all thing that ain't my thing i don't have my kids hell but anyway that was my sidebar but anyway she's going over there telling us telling you know and and uh, telling the world pretty much. Todd, Todd ain't chipping in. Todd ain't, mm -mm. He liked to floss. He liked to look good. He liked to hang around me. But when it comes to these kids, mm-mm. Mm-mm. He ain't doing his job, America. So, the Real Housewives of Atlanta Star went on to tell her viewers that her daughter wasn't even a week old yet. And her husband wanted to spend time in the club. Yes, honey. He wanted to make it rain, make it rain. Ride the choo-choo train. Choo-choo. 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 Choo, choo. Yeah, he wasn't letting that freak train go by. He said, uh-uh, I told you. I told you, woman. When we get blazed, home, settled, fed, bathed, cooing, and all that, I got to go. I got to go. I can't do that for you, really. <laughs> Maybe when she started walking and she started saying dad and all like that and want to run behind me and tag me and hold me on the leg. Then, oh, okay. But right now, she your baby girl. She yours, all right? You wanted her, Okay. I'm out of there. <laughs> that was Tom pretty much saying, y'all. But anyway, um, going on, it says, um, I feel like he's being selfish, Candy's telling us. Candy told the viewers, video viewers, we got a new baby, she added. When it's time to do the late night hours, he doesn't even try to chip in whatsoever. And I remember Todd, you know, was a grin because he said he was asleep. <laughs> I'm like, honey, you pour some hot water on his behind or some cold water. He'll wake up. Okay, he'll get the picture then that he ain't chipping in. But that's my sidebar, not in this article. Going back to the article, it said Todd responded to the criticism by telling Candy and their social media fans that he sleeps through the night. See, do you know what I'm saying? I'm up on things because I watched the video last night. I told you. But anyway, I don't know what's going on. Yeah, because your ass sleep. All right, probably from a hangover. Uh, he added, watch the hilarious update segment below. Okay, and pretty much they're just telling you if you want to go and see the video because they have their video on this particular article as well if you want to go and check it out go on and check it out child but my question to you all do y'all think it's problems in the castle over there at the buck uh boris boris tucker residence do you think do you think we got some issues that may come up later on throughout next year do we smell a divorce chad do we smell a divorce do we smell a separation because there definitely is a divide on how they want to parent, especially when it comes to those girls. And he's not giving her the opportunity uh, to express some love and some financial splurging on her stepdaughter, Kayla. Mm-hmm. That's the problem right there, honey. I was like, hey, he just want all his money, your money for his stepchild. That's just my opinion because he ain't giving me nothing else to think about or look about or look at from a different angle. Because if he's not allowing you... The permission to finance, you know, baby Kayla. I don't know, because I've had to, like, go over his head and say, can I talk to the mom? Can I talk to the biological mom to see what's really going on? Does she not want me to give the money to her? Or is it just you, dog? Which one is it? Set up a meeting with her, because I just want to know. 
But anyway, that's my take on this particular video. Y'all get down in the comments and y'all let me know. Are they headed for divorce? Yeah, I hope not. Because they are a beautiful couple. They really are. They just need to start, stay off social media with their personal business. You know what I'm saying? Because people always be in them, be talking outside of their necks about this, that, and the third. Be putting, you know, uh, books and, and information and talks here that don't need to be there. Same thing can happen to Candy. She could be hearing too much stuff and then trying to apply it back in her marriage and it ain't going to work. Okay. I'm like, mm, don't put your stuff out in social media, girl. Bad, bad move, bad move. Just go and talk to Mama Joyce. She'll tell you. <laughs> your mama will tell you the truth whether you agree with it or not. Or at least her truth. And you can just cipher through what is really valid and just what's just your mama just talking out the side of her neck. Okay. But that's all I have for this video, guys. And I hope y'all enjoy it. And I will see you next video. Good night.